Hello everybody, it's Dr. Stuart A. Swerdlow. And Janet Diane Moya Swerdlow. And this is the Expansions News Podcast for the Thanksgiving week of two, November 2019. And so I'll get right into it uh, because I have some uh, news. Most of it is about the so-called uh, impeachment. And the Democrat leaders are rushing through the impeachment process in order to beat a potentially scathing revelation about the origins of the Trump-Russia investigation, according to a House Intelligence Committee Republican. Texas Republican John Ratcliffe said Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz's forthcoming report on FBI intelligence gathering activities is likely to be damning in how it reflects upon the Obama administration and, by extension, former Vice President Joe Biden. Nancy, fancy pants Nancy Pelosi, and Adam Schiff are racing to get this done, according to the congressman. They're racing the clock. They want to get this done before information that comes out that damages the Obama-Biden administration and their efforts to frame Donald Trump come out in the IG report or from John Durham's criminal investigation into those very same issues. Horrid's findings will show top Justice Department and FBI officials misled the FISA court by using an unverified dossier compiled by British ex-spy Christopher Steele to obtain warrants to electronically monitor one-time Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. U.S. Attorney John Durham, who is conducting the criminal inquiry into the origin of the Russian investigation, will have uh, very major information. Attorney General William Barr reports that, in his understanding, the release of of the report was imminent. The FISA report will be made public during the first week of December. Uh, Specifically, I understand it will be December 9th. Anyway, once President Trump releases his info, uh, the demon rats or demon craps will flee their sinking ship and look for asylum. George Soros, there's that name again, most likely has his hands all over the Trump impeachment. It seems that Eric Charmella, if that's how you say it, probably they say it in an American way, was in the Soros inner circle while working for the Obama administration. Eric Chalmela, whose real clear investigations suggest that he is likely so-called whistleblower, received e- uh, emails from Ukraine policy from top director at George Soros's Open Society Foundation, a direct con- connection between him and George Soros. The emails informed Chalmela that a handful of other Obama administration foreign policy officials about Soros' whereabouts, the contents of Soros' private meetings about Ukraine, and a future meeting the billionaire activist was holding with the Prime Minister of Ukraine. So Soros is an international treasonous criminal. And it goes on. The so-called Vindmund person, who insists on being called Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, told Adam Schiff during his testimony this week that he went around his chain of command to undermine the Trump administration. That's treason. Vindman confessed that he told Ukrainian President Zelensky to stay out of U.S. politics during his trip there in April. Who was he to tell the Ukrainian president what to do? Vindman did not tell his superiors about his message to the Ukrainian leader. leader. Vindman also testified earlier to the House Intelligence Committee in his basement hearing that he thought the president was wrong in his policy with Ukraine, so he later told Ukrainians to ignore the president. Mm. Really? Execution time, Mr. Mr. Vindman, not Lieutenant Colonel. You don't deserve that title. Vindman leaked the Trump Zelensky phone call to anti-Trump CIA leaker Eric Charamella and went around his chain of command. Treason. Vindman reported to Russian expert Tim Mor- Now, this is a Russian expert, his name is Tim Morrison, who told investigators that Vindman was a leaker, a liar, and could not be trusted. Gee, that's not news. Vindman admitted during the hearing that he was the primary source of leaks of Trump's call with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, and to individual in the intelligence community. However, he refused to name the whistleblower, which we all know to be CIA snitch Eric Chalamella. Alexander Vidman, who was born in the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, 
and moved to the U.S. when he was a toddler, told the GOP council on Tuesday the sh and, and during the, the Schiff show trial that Ukraine asked him to be their defense minister three times. Now, if he's an American citizen, why would Ukraine ask him to be their defense minister? And there's that number three I keep telling us everywhere. Now, Mark Geist, who is a hero who was credited with saving 25 people in the Benghazi terror attack, which, by the way, Hillary caused to happen and murdered the people there. He didn't send help when right. requested. Mark Geist said that Vindman is a disgrace to all who have served and a traitor. Justice Department Inspector Jet Michael Horowitz has found evidence that an FBI law lawyer manipulated a key investigative document related to the FBI's secretive surveillance of a former Trump campaign advisor, enough to change the substantive meaning of the document. So that means they altered official documents illegally. Horowitz's comprehensive report on allegations of Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA, a warrant abuse, former Trump, Trump campaign aide Carter Page will be released again December 9th, and according to uh, Graham, uh, that's locked. CNN, horrible place, CNN first reported the news, which was largely confirmed by the Washington Post, a CIA agent. But the Post, hours after publishing the story, conspicuously removed the portion of its reporting that the FBI employee involved worked beneath Peter Strzok, the FBI's since fired head of counterintelligence. The Post did not offer an explanation for the change because they are liars and traitors who need to be executed. The Washington Post is a CIA division. Newly released text messages involving text messages uh, between Strzok and former FBI lawyer Lisa Page revealed that Page, who was not present for the Flynn interview, had apparently made edits to the so-called 302 witness report of the case, which was key to Flynn's prosecution on a false statements charge. Page told Strzok on February 10, 2017 that she, quote, gave my edits to Bill to put on your desk, unquote. Treason, both of them, execution time. Now, do another bit of news from your home country, your almost home I country. I have a lot of home countries. Yeah, it's France had a moderate earthquake. Mm -hmm. And it's unusual for France to have a moderate earthquake, especially so close to the surface. It cracked the uh, countryside, made a crack. And, and of course, the French are very upset because they shall not have cracks in France. Then earthquake struck the remote part of southern France uh, last Monday and scientists don't know what happened. The 4.8 magnitude quake was unusual for uh, France. It was uh, near Letel, about 90 miles northwest of Marseille, and the researchers are trying to learn its source. Listen, I've told you for decades, Africa is pushing north against the Mediterranean, and that is causing quakes all over the Mediterranean, not only in France, but in Turkey and Greece and Italy and Spain, blah, blah, blah. You know this already. Watch out for strong quakes in California, your other homeland, Washington State, Missouri, which has been rocking and rolling, Japan, Philippines, New Zealand, and volcanic activity is increasing globally. I'll explain that in my January class. Okay. So, next for me? Yeah. All right. Okay, so, time's up. So, for first interesting piece of news I have is about one of your friends, Pope Francis. Oh, he called me the other day. He wanted me to go to lunch with yeah. him. Well, I know you're friends with the Pope that lives in Brazil. Brazil, yes. yes. So, Pope Francis. I have friends. I, uh, he's my commander, you know. Exactly. It's Pope Francis considers introducing a new ecological sin in a bid to battle climate change. He said it's a duty to introduce this new sin to protect our common home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was very interesting because that tells you whose side he's on. Anybody yeah. who's yeah, pushing climate know that. change, as we yeah. know, especially with the, it, it's all a lie. So we know what side he's on. It just goes to confirm it. The, other, the next one is short. Somebody sent this to me. It's about the ACLU that tweeted on International Men's Day. Now I'm going to tell you this. I didn't know it was Men's Day. Oh, you missed it. But just in case you're confused if you're a man or not, ACL is telling you that there is no one way to be a man. No? No, that there are men who do get their periods, and those are men. Really? And men get pregnant and give birth. What's wrong with you? Why don't you well, give birth? Hold on a second. Oh, I think I did get my period. I was going to say, and maybe you got, well... Or maybe I stab myself in my groin. Okay. That's the only way a man will get his period, if he freaking stabs himself in the groin, well, okay? I, how about giving birth, because then no, that would that be No, that he's really not a great. man. I wouldn't have to give any... Men do not have uteruses or eggs. Sorry. And trans and non-binary men belong, whatever all that means. They no. 
six. All BS. So the next is the University and Colleges Union put out its position on 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 gender, and it said you know that basically you can self-identify as a gender. Well now. The universities and college union has decided that people can also choose their own race. <laughs> no, they must have known that double NAACP woman was white. Who they mentioned, mentioned was that black. in this particular race is story. Choice. And they say, our rules commit us to ending all forms of discrimination, bigotry, and stereotyping. UCU has a long history of enabling members to self-identify, whether that's being black, disabled, LGBT+, plus, or women. So if an elephant decides it's a dog, we should just keep it in our house like a pet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Apparently recognizing self-defined women as fully female is still deeply controversial. No, it's not. Many feminists and others. No, it's not. And in the UK, Theresa May's government oh. considered changing the law, but they put those plans on hold after a backlash from female voters. Oh, Thank God. Please. Now, many female academics are now saying they're facing harassment from students and activists for questioning the trans-inclusive policies. And several high-profile female speakers are banned from speaking at universities, such as Jermaine Greer and Dame Jenny Murray. I guess I'd be banned, too. You would, because, well, unless you identify as a woman, then you could go. Well, I have my breasts. Yeah, you could say you have a period, mm -hmm. and, you're gonna, and you're pregnant. Mm. So the union's position on race was mocked as the latest nonsensical demonstration, what they're calling woke thinking, which is like bad woke. grammar, woke thinking imported from U.S. campuses. Who invented that word? It's a terrible word. And in Britain, they said actor Anthony Lennon, who was born in London to Irish parents, faced criticism last year when it emerged that he won funding from an arts council that helps ethnic minority actors develop their stage careers because he identifies as a born-again African, even though he was born in London to Irish parents. Is he white or black? Well, why don't you tell me? He's Irish. Well, if you're Irish, you're Most not likely. African. Right. Unless you were black well, he's and your a born ancestors again African. are African. All right, well, anyway. So that's what's happening. And Kathleen Stock, a philosophy professor at Sussex University and UCU member, said the union's position on race and she was nonsensical, anti-intellectual propaganda. So yes, that's correct. Oh my gosh. Now, convoluted history. Now, first of all, I hope all of you out there by now have read True Galactic History, Blue Blood, True Blood, all about aliens. Yes, but this is even... Well, and this one's got stuff in it too, but right now this is alien time. So this is alien information that's all over the news. That it's, and it's convoluted, so that's why I said I think they must have read your stuff. Huh. So, NASA, NASA finds evidence on three meteorites that life on Earth evolved from asteroids. Apparently, their three meteorites contained several types of sugar. Among them was ribose, which is the key ingredient of RNA. Mm -hmm. And past analyses have turned up amino acids, which is another building block of life. So, scientists say that likely these sugars came from space and therefore not Earth, and therefore meteorites come from asteroids, so asteroids must carry the building blocks for life. Listen to me, those people who said that, they came from ass, no toroid, just ass. They said that the chemical reaction of these that created these sugars happened in space, not Earth, and it was these ancient meteorite impacts long ago that delivered the biological material that led to life forms here on Earth. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Now... The next story, that alien life might be more common than previously thought. Duh. Scientists claim 9 out of 10 twin Earths and distant star systems could harbor complex life. Yeah, almost 10 out of 10. They claim really. that its tilting of the planet's rotational axis, <laughs> axis is the most important to the development of life. No. And therefore, that creates what they were calling a stable climate. They, so, they're assuming that life has to be like on Earth. Exactly. And it isn't. So... So, because of the certain tilt that all these planets are showing, they're saying these must have. Yeah, they have a tilt also, Earth. but they're like up to upside down. And then the next story, Jade also Jade agrees. Jade knows it's not true. The next story says that alien life could exist on Saturn's moons because a new map of Titan reveals a Martian landscape of lakes, mountains, and a labyrinth of, ter of terrains. So they said that experts claim that Titan is the only object in the solar system other than Earth that has stable liquids on the surface. Hmm. The co-author, one of the co-authors of this study, Michael Malaska, said what is really fun to think about 
is if there are any ways that those more complex organics can go down and mix with water in the deep icy crust or deep subsurface ocean. Mm -hmm. So could it, or something like it, live in tight and deep in the crust or ocean where temperatures are a little warmer? I've got stable liquids on my body. Does that mean got life on me? Now the next one you're going to love even more. This is an Ohio University professor, an emeritus professor of medical entomology at Ohio University, has spent years studying the photographs, NASA's photographs of Mars, mm -hmm. and he claims that there are insect-like beings actually living on Mars. I told you that a long time well, ago. Well, he read your book, and now he's trying to put it together mm -hmm. for the public. So he claims there's evidence of exoskeletons and jointed appendages of beings, and he says that they are not only fossilized, but that they are currently living because he claims that the specimens appear to have turned in the direction of the camera. Huh. He says there has been and still is life on Mars. Yeah, duh. Saying the images show both fossilized and living creatures. He said three body regions, a single pair of antenna, and six legs are traditionally sufficient to establish identification as an insect on Earth. Again, he's using Earth uh, basis instead of what could be elsewhere. He says these characteristics should likewise be valid to identify an organism on Mars as insect-like. On these bases, anthropod and insect-like forms can be seen in the Mars rover photos. Mm -hmm. He also claimed that the photos showed bees in their nests ah. and others highlighted fossilized creatures that resemble snakes. And he says the presence of higher metazoan organism on Mars implies the presence of nutrient energy sources and processes, food chains and webs, and water as elements functioning in a viable, if extreme, ecological setting sufficient to sustain life. Blah, so blah, blah. I'm going to refer you to Blue Blood, True Blood if you want true galactic history, because this is an amazing book with pictures like I've told you, followed up by True World History, Humanities Saga, so these are excellent. And of course we have the bees right here. Yes, and we have Montauk Alien Connection, Stuart's autobiography, and also has a little bit in there about me as well. So those a are little, great books. A little bit. A little bit. Now, the last story I have for you is that scientists claim they found a fifth fourth of matter that cannot be explained by current physics logic. Mm -hmm. The Hungarian Academy of Science researches admits the results show that um, a, a decaying helium atom emitted light when the particles split. They came at a strange angle that couldn't be explained from current research. So now they're claiming that they have a fifth fourth of nature and that could transform fourth force of nature. Of force. Which could transform our understanding of how the universe works. And as you know, dark matter is the invisible substance that is thought to make up more than 80% of the universe's masses. That's so nice. dark matter makes up a lot of As we've talked about here. And, and also, we talked about the parallel universes and what holds them together. Mm -hmm. We talked about a lot of that kind of thing. And this is a fabulous book. This one, like Stuart says, talks about the bees. And you want to read this one first because that's such up for this one. And guess what's coming? We have a third, third one, one is in process. So we have that. Almost done. So anyway, if you need some reading for the winter months, this is excellent. Or if you're in the southern hemisphere and you need them while you're on the beach. Yeah. Also, White Owl Legends is an excellent gift book. This has to do with an archetypal story of creation based on Chief White Owl legends. Actually, this began way back in the 40s, this book. So, fascinating stuff. Read about this on our website. Get your copy. Mm -hmm. Use it for gifts. Now, my webinars are continuing, the self-healing webinars. Our next session starts the first week in December. There will only be three classes because of the holiday. And, of course, in January... We have our... Just like you skipped something. I know, but I'm leading into that. Our hyperspace uh, oversoul extravaganza, which we always focus on health and healing, and will include some of these this new information that Stuart's been researching. And in the meantime, the end of November, there is a webinar which is being broadcast out of Quito. You can sign up for it anywhere in the world. It will be in Spanish and English. And there's so many of you who want Spanish. Well, this is Spanish. Sign up. Here's your chance. Mm -hmm. Look for that information on our Facebook page, on the website. It's all out there. And, of course, I've been telling you about the new books. I'm still waiting now on a, on a release date for the medical book. That should be coming hopefully very soon. I was hoping to have it for you by this week, but... I'm still working with the printer. I'm getting all the logistics settled. And anything else you need? Oh, my, my Italy trip. 
Well, that you're skipping again. Well, that's yours. I don't know too much about that. You have to tell them. Yeah, well, in April, two things are happening. Uh, first of all, I, am, I have been invited to a big, huge ceremony in Malta by the Knights and by the royalty of Europe. And I'll be there 17, 18, 19 of uh, April. I'll have that on the website in Soon. a few weeks. Uh, and right after that, I am going to Turkey again uh, for a special three-day trip to Gobekli Tepe, the 13,000-year-old city, which amazing information and history, which I'll be leading a group uh, from all over the world. It will be in English uh, and with Turkish translation for those who need it, uh, but it will be in English and uh, that information should be up after the first of the year on our website. Yeah, and then of course our Clear Health and Healing Tour in June, probably the middle of June. Again, those dates will be available after the first of the year. So, I will remind you please, no questions for um, uh, the YouTube channel or for Facebook. There shall be no questions! We have the Q&A blog. Please get a membership, less than a dollar a day, expansions.com. And where you will find amazing, amazing help, information, support, absolutely everything you need to know about us. And so, to all Americans, I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. And you should be very thankful because of what's coming. And we'll see you very soon. Bye, Bye for now.